Hello friends, welcome to the Elite class. In our previous lecture, we discussed about the Cro-Magnon man. Hope that was clear to you all. Today we are going to take a new topic that is the chance lead man. Let's get started. So, the chance lead man was discovered by Fuchs and Hardy in a cave near Chance Lead, France. Now, Chance Lead is a place which lies in the Dordogne region of France. As we have already studied at the time of Cro Magnon Man, that the Cro Magnon is a place near Dordogne region of France. Similarly, Chance Lead is also a place in the Dordogne region of the France. Fuchs and Hardy has discovered Chance Lead Man in the year 1888. The cranial capacity of chance lead man is 1500 to 1700 cc. Now they have a very characteristic feature and that is the head of the chance lead man is folded on its chest and the knees are touching the jaw. That means he is somewhat in the C shape. Let's have a look on the diagram to get it more appropriately. As you can see over here that this is the skull skeleton of a chance lead man and you can see the head is folded on the chest and the knees are touching the chin this is what we read okay moving forward it is said that the chance lead man resembles the modern day Eskimos their appearance, maybe their uh, facial structure, this shows somewhat resemblance to the modern day Eskimos. Moving forward to the physical features of a chance lead man, it is seen that they show no prognathism. If you remember in our previous lecture, we have already studied about the prognathism. Prognathism is simply the extension or bulging out of the lower jaw of the skull. But there is no bulging out of the lower jaw in the chance lead man. They have a very well developed chin and they have the broader rummy but the body is quite narrower in them. So they also have the uh, dolicosphalic head. Now what do we mean by the dolicosphalic head? Dolicosphalic head simply means that the length of the head is greater than that of its width. So the sym uh, symmetry is there in the head but the length and the width differs to some extent. They have well developed sagittal crusts. Now what do we mean by the sagittal crust? It is simply a ridge of bone which runs lengthwise along the midline of the top of skull. They, they have well developed parietal tuberositis. We have already uh, read it in the previous lecture about the parietal tuberositis. That is simply a convex smooth eminence on external surface of parietal bone of our skull. They have very prominent cheekbones also. Talking about the orbits, they have quadrilateral shaped orbits. This is shown here that this is the quadrilateral shaped orbits. Fine. Now, if you have to see, this is the skull of a chance lead man. You can see the cheekbones are quite prominent. They have quadrilateral shaped orbits and they have a very well developed chin. No protruding in the chin. They have simply a very, very well developed chin. Fine. Now, when we say that their body is narrow, so definite, it's very definite that they have a very long and a narrow nose. Now, coming to the foot, their first metatarsal is separated from the second. For instance, you will have, this is the first metatarsal. They are not connected at all. They have a separate metatarsal, first metatarsal and the second toe. So, they are quite separated from one another. Moving forward, their limb bones, they are quite massive and they are very strong. Their bones are quite stronger and it is a distinct feature in them that their upper limbs are comparatively longer than the lower limbs. 
now we will understand it more clearly on the diagram as you can see this is the chance leap man's skull if it has been in an erect position this is the upper limb and this is the lower limb you can feel the difference in the length of the bones you have been provided in this diagram also in this very diagram you can feel the difference that this is the thigh bone and maybe this one is underneath this is the lower uh, limb so you can simply feel the difference fine and in this diagram also you will see that there is no protruding or no bulging out in the chin the chin is very well developed in them they have a very broader skull and a long skull and this is here where we have the parietal bone and you will find a very well developed parietal tuberositis fine moving forward we have to read about where yes, we were here dolichocephalic head we already said that if they have the dolichocephalic head now why have we discussed this point another time it's showing that they have a dolichocephalic head but still they have a harmonic skull now what do we mean by the harmonic skull harmonic skull simply means that there is a symmetry you know there is a symmetry in their skull simply there is a symmetry in skull now how to understand the symmetry in skull let's have a look on the diagram over here so as you can see in this kind of the skull you will find that your upper skull and the lower skull plays so there is a complete symmetry in this very and this so there is no symmetry at all and in this it is completely out of symmetry so this one shows a complete symmetric skull you will see the cheekbones the narrow nose the quadrilateral orbits the completely developed chin so this is how you can differentiate between a harmonic and a uh, disharmonic skull in cro-magnon man you will find a disharmonic skull and rectangular orbits but in a chance lead man you will find a harmonic skull with quadrilateral orbits and this is the only difference between the main big difference between the Cro-Magnon and the chance state man moving forward to the cultural status they followed the Magdalenian culture now this is a very important point to note that they followed the Magdalenian culture now what do we mean by Magdalenian culture it's simply a culture where we use a number of tools be it the bones stones the ivory products and also they were very well versed with the paintings the crafting and more so this is actually a culture that has been followed in upper paleolithic age and this culture has succeeded the cultures of orinacea and solitrian got it moving forward talking about the phylogeny now phylogeny is based it is said that on the basis of physical and the cultural similarities between Eskimos and the chance lead it's claimed that following the retreat of the ice sheet towards the north at the closure of glacial age chance leads have given rise to Eskimos as it moves from Europe to North America because as you see Europe is somewhat in this area and I guess North America would be here so in moving from this place to this place and residing over it they have transformed themselves with certain uh, new modifications and they have given rise to the present day Eskimos fine now Houghton is a physical anthropologist who argued in this context and he said that they mostly does not resemble to the Eskimos but to the 12th century Icelanders of the Norway and the Irish region there were some Icelanders at uh, the Norway and Irish in 12th century so Houghton say that Chancellor man resembles more to them and less to the Eskimos of the present times fine so this is a small brief about the uh, chance lead man in the next lecture we'll come up with grimaldi man till then take care 
and please subscribe to my channel thank you so much